Today, I'm gonna show you how to speed ramp inside of After Effects. If you've been scrolling through social media recently, you've probably seen the speed ramping effect that's everywhere right now. So today I'm gonna show you how to create this amazing speed ramping effect inside of After Effects and show you how to get the most out of this technique. Then at the very end, I'll show you how to spice it up so you can take it to the next level. Speed ramping is basically just the process of creatively manipulating the speed of your clip over time. But to really show you, let's go over how I created this effect here, which was recently popularized by Yerbalat Sarzmabayev. Okay, so let's start by grabbing our footage here and putting it into our timeline. But first, let's quickly make sure that our clip is only containing the part that we want to. It's gonna be difficult to edit and adjust things if we've got a bunch of excess footage hanging around. So once you've chopped it down to only the sections that you want, set your in and out point to be at the beginning and end of your clip using the B for the beginning and N for the end of your clip. Then right click here and select trim comp to work area. But now our clip length should be exactly the same length as our timeline. Then we're gonna prepare it by right clicking and selecting pre-compose and moving all attributes to the new composition. The reason we're doing this will become a little bit more clear later on. But now that we have a new clean composition, we can right click our clip and select time, enable time remapping. Here you should see two dots appear, one at the beginning and one at the end. Time remapping is the key to speed ramping in After Effects. Right now, the footage still just plays back at normal speed. But if I bring the second keyframe closer to the first, you'll notice that immediately we increase the speed of our clip playback. Basically, these keyframes aren't what you're used to. They're not changes happening at a specific point in time, it's changing when that point in time of your clip actually plays. So because we moved the final frame of our clip closer to the beginning, everything plays faster and then it's frozen after this keyframe because there's nothing after the final frame. And knowing this, we can play with some interesting effects. Like if we make a keyframe somewhere in the middle and then only a couple of frames later, we make another keyframe, but then move this one back, our footage plays and then slows down here because we're basically stretching out the duration of only this portion of our clip. It becomes a lot easier if you highlight these keyframes and then click on your graph editor. So now you can see exactly what's happening visually. By the way, we're using the speed graph right now. If you go down to here and click on this icon, you can change between the speed graph and the value graph. The speed graph basically just measures how fast your clips are playing back based on how high up you are on the graph. So this middle section is the slowest and this right section is the fastest. The value graph on the other hand basically just measures the change in parameters that you're using. So it's actually how flat or how steep the line is that determines how fast you're going. So it starts out fast, is flat in the middle so it's slower, and then ends fast. I prefer the value graph which is what I'll be using for the entire tutorial just to keep things simple. So in order to recreate this effect, we need to create different sections of slow and then fast movement. I'm gonna move along the timeline and just make keyframes at different points along the timeline through our timer mapping effect. Right now, nothing should be different because I haven't actually changed any of these keyframes. I've essentially just marked them and enabled them to be manipulated. But now what I can do is go to the second keyframe, move one or two frames past it, make another keyframe and then stretch it out a bit, just like we did before. And then do that over and over again for each section until we get to the end. Then we can shorten everything up by highlighting all of our keyframes, holding Alt or Option, and then taking the last keyframe and moving it closer to the first. And that'll speed everything up proportionally together. And with just that, we've got this. You can see the effect starting to take hold, but we're still just instantaneously changing the speed rather than ramping the speed. The first step to actually make your speed ramping work is to just smooth these out a bit, and we're gonna do that in the graph editor. Highlight all of your keyframes, right click, and select keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now in order to ramp our clips, we wanna create an S shape like this. Basically so that we start slow, ramp to the next section, and then slow down as we get to the next section. And then keep doing that for each new keyframe. You can choose to do this manually for each different section to give it a little bit more creativity, or you can just highlight all of your keyframes here and then stretch out all the handles together to give it a more unified look and to save time. And with just that, we've gone from this to this really quickly, but it still feels like it's missing that pizzazz that you might have seen from other speed ramping effects. So I'll quickly show you some of the secrets that they're using because they're adding a little bit of something extra to their shots. First, we pre-composed this shot before so that we could dive into this composition later on. And what we're gonna be doing to this is stabilizing our footage. People say that you need to stabilize your footage before speed ramping, and that's true, but because we pre-composed it first, After Effects is still going to act as if anything done to this base clip happens before any of the speed ramping that we did. So if we do our stabilization here, After Effects will act as if we did the stabilization first. And if for some reason you forgot to pre-compose it at the start, just take the clip with all of your speed ramping, 
and pre-compose it, but make sure that leave attributes is selected. Now your ramping will stay in this section and your bass clip will remain untouched, ready to be stabilized. So let's highlight our clip and go to our tracker section and click on stabilize motion. Line up an area of high contrast, like our subject's face, click analyze forwards and watch it do its magic. And if you needed a little bit more help with the stabilization effect, we've actually already done a tutorial just on that effect and I've linked to it in the description below. Once you're done, hit apply and now you have something that looks like this. You're gonna have some edges peeking in, so let's quickly scale up and reposition so that there's no peeking around the edges of frame. And now you can click tab and then go back to your higher composition and you can see that our effect now looks way better than before. All that speed ramping now feels like it just hits so much harder because the subject's face is staying in exactly the same place. It stops looking chaotic and it starts feeling way more stylized. Now, before I show you the last little bits of spice that you can sprinkle onto this effect, let me show you some of the other creative ways that you can utilize speed ramping. First, you can create this boomerang style effect by going forwards and backwards by using a simple set of four keyframes. Have your starting keyframe, the keyframe where you wanna end, and then you can copy and paste that second keyframe just a few frames later. Then copy and paste the first keyframe all the way at the end. So you basically have keyframe one, keyframe two, and then keyframe two again, and keyframe one again. Now the key is to make sure that they have the correct shape. So go to your graph editor and adjust the first keyframe so that it has this sort of a shape to the graph. Starting super fast and then slowing down as it gets into the second keyframe. Then do the opposite for the ending keyframe, starting slow and then becoming faster and faster as it gets closer towards the third keyframe. And you can also change up the distance between these keyframes to give a little bit more emphasis. Like for example, if you speed up the third keyframe here by dragging it closer to the second, the end of the boomerang leaves more intensely than it came in, which is a great option to help you with another tip, which is to use speed ramps as a transition. By giving more energy to the beginning and end of your pieces of footage, it helps them to feel like they're more connected and it makes them feel less like cuts and more like transitions. If I just put these two clips back to back, it looks okay. But as soon as I give each clip this graph structure, this immediately feels more intentional and more like a transition. Another tip is that if you wanted to get super slow motion, but you didn't have a slow motion camera, you can use the time warp effect instead of time remapping and use all of the same fundamentals that we talked about, but After Effects will do a little bit more work to process the in-between frames to fake a super slow motion look. Just keep in mind that this effect, along with all of the other speed ramping tips I've given you in this tutorial, work better the higher frame rate that you shoot at. 24 frames per second will start to look a little bit iffy when you get slower. 30 frames per second is a bit better, but if you can shoot at 60 frames per second, it'll ensure that when you get into those slower sections, everything's gonna still look buttery smooth. Now, finally, if you really wanted to push your clips to the next level, you can add the effect pixel motion blur to your final composition. It'll take some processing, but this adds fake motion blur to your scene based on the movement of pixels in your shot. And the great thing is that because our subject is remaining in a similar position in frame the whole time, there's really little motion blur on them, but a lot of motion blur on the scene around them. This helps to add energy because it makes it feel like there's a bigger motion in your shot, but it also helps to highlight your subject because the world around them is blurry and they're more in focus by comparison. It's kind of the same principle that makes your subject stand out when you shoot with a shallow depth of field. But now here's the absolute cherry on top that's gonna take your effect to the next level, and that's with some incredible sound design. I mentioned this viral speed ramping short at the beginning of the video, and the reason that this one went so viral in my opinion opinion is because of the incredible sound design that went into it. So in order to replicate this, I downloaded some sound effects for Motionary, specifically the clicking of a camera shutter, and even the winding sound of a film camera for the part where we go back in time here. And you can add them inside of After Effects, but what I prefer to do is actually drag your After Effects composition into Premiere Pro, and then place that onto your Premiere Pro timeline and doing the sound design there. So with the power of speed ramping and Motionary sound effects, we've gone from this to this. I've left a link to all of those sound effects in a special collection in the description down below. And if you wanted to keep growing on your After Effects journey, you can check out this video right over here. I'll see you over there.